one. Winner of this game moves yep. on to the playoffs. It's a big match. And again, it is the last of round four. We already have four teams in the, the playoffs, in that 18 playoffs. So uh, VGJ Thunder, Evil Geniuses, Newbie, Virtus Pro. We're looking for that fifth team. And then we have that fifth round to determine the last three as well, Brax. Exciting stuff, Mon. Yes, very much so. By the way, of course, after this game, we will have the draw for the last round. So make sure you stick it here after this game is done. But uh, with that all out of the way, let's get back to the draft, my friend. We have a couple more bands, the Terrible Band, the Bat Rider Band, the now uh, okay, Phantom, Phantom Lancer Band, which yep. both teams have actually played. Secret played it yesterday, and I believe so did CCNC in the mid lane against the Visage that uh, OG liked to pick. Yep, that would have been a pretty nice here to compliment the Razor as well. They can both go in either lane, by the way, so... You can switch it up depending on the uh, offline matchup from Team Secret as well to make sure you guarantee those good matchups. Yep. Five seconds but remaining. what are we looking for? We have the Elder Titan, we have the Shadow Fiend for Team Secret, so yep. still plenty of, of room in terms of the support pick, the offlane pick, the safe lane pick. Optic will go for the Tiny. This is a hero we have seen maybe too much of, perhaps. <laughs> but he's a fun one. He's right? fun, for sure. He kills people. He makes moves around the map, and he's awesome. Yeah, uh, you've you've uh, expressed your admiration for this hero numerous times. Yes, I have. Yeah, I know you're a big fan. But in this draft, do you like it? Is my question. You know, I like it in this draft because Tiny could also potentially go mid against Shadow Fiend, and with the help of a Sand King roaming, you can always avalanche into the toss back, and you're pretty much guaranteed to kill Shadow Fiend every time, right? Yeah. It's one of these heroes that can snowball heavily against the Shadow Fiend, and throughout the game, he's also pretty nice against him. With that Blink Dagger or Shadow Blade pickup later on the road, you can just one shot him. Now but, let's talk about, uh, I do want to talk about Ace, sorry to cut you off my friend, but okay. uh, Ace heroes that are available. I know this, this guy can play some serious dota. He plays a lot of different varied styles of heroes. I think Lone Druid being the biggest one that people talk about for him. Yeah. But there's plenty of Ace heroes available. I mean, what are you thinking in that regard? It's funny when a player likes to play these kind of heroes because they truly understand when this hero is strong in a draft. They're not heroes that you play every game because, you know, they have counters. You know, they have good games and bad games, and the more you play them, the more you explore their potential, right? And you can truly understand when it's a good Meepo game, for example, or a Lone Druid game, right? Yeah. So with that gigantic hero pool, he's going to be able to see, probably once Opti Gaming picks their next hero, would be my best bet. Yeah, and that's where we're going to get some information. Optic now with 1 minute and 30 seconds left in reserve time. They have grabbed two of their cores, maybe potentially three if the Sand King were to go in the offlane. Unlikely, though. Are we gonna are we gonna see Crystal Maiden? We need a five position hero. Bane's CM, band. Um, is Rubik's disruptor band. available? It is available. I don't know if PBD Bane was. So, oh yeah, Bane's banned first. So you just mentioned that actually. Yeah, and that's that's PBD's go to. I feel like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, disruptor is available. Uh, I kind of like it with some of these heroes. I think it has a good synergy with Sand King and Tiny. Yeah, they already have strong lanes too, so it helps with that. Lich. Wow, okay. Lich. Okay. Oh, this is pretty big because this is like the. Uh, Shadow Fiend doesn't like to play against this, right? Because when you play against uh, Lich, the lane is always on your hill already. Yeah. Shadow Fiend's getting his experience cut out, and he's going to be one up against a dueling, probably. Yeah, that's going to be rather annoying for the SF. And it's not a hero we see too often, I think, the Lich. Not anymore, anyway. No, not at all. It might have been picked once this tournament so far, but I'll get back to you on that. Like, imagine if Lich and Tiny are mid lane up against the Shadow Fiend. That means the wave is always going to be on top of Tiny's hill. If Shadow Fiend comes up the last hit, he could get uh, Avalanche tossed backwards into a Frost Blast. It sounds like a miserable time. So Lich hasn't been picked yet. Many, okay. many heroes actually haven't been picked uh, so far, I think. There's a lot available still for the next few games and then the main stage uh, 18 playoff. Okay. And this is going to be one of them now taken away. Lich will go for Optic Gaming, and this will help out uh, the early stage of the game, getting the lanes back in favor for Optic. And Secret, will they pick up their offlaner? Will they pick up their ace hero? They, wanna, they might want to leave the ace hero to last or, or whatever carry they're going to grab in that regard. It's not going to matter too much because Team Secret don't have the overall last pick anyway. So they pick up the ace hero and the weaver. Yep. They already see enough to make a, a confident pick. Weaver. Yeah, this is... Uh, weaver feels like he's fallen off quite a bit. I've heard people talk about Weaver. I, I, I think I've talked to Suns fan about it, and he thinks this hero is just garbage. I'm pretty sure. Well, don't listen to everything Shannon says. Yeah, Shannon's got some interesting thoughts on a lot of, a yeah. lot of stuff. He and literally he, only plays Pangolier in pub games. And he's not here, to, you know, to trash on you yet. So. He'll be here later, and then he can yell at me. I'm sure. Yep. Weaver looks pretty good here. Uh, once he gets to that Lincoln's here, if he wants it, the only real stun that can affect him is like the tiny blink avalanche toss, right? 
Yeah, the Lincoln Sphere is going to be critical this game for Secret on the Weaver. Yep, and it also complements the Shadow Fiend quite nicely because it's a carry here that doesn't need a lot of help, which means you can dedicate a lot more resources to help Shadow Fiend. It's interesting. When I think of Weaver, though, I think of a hero that, that likes to get farm, and I think of Shadow Fiend as well as sort of the same thing, where they both kind of need that space to work with, but I guess Weaver can get involved early nowadays. Yeah, yeah, and it's hard to pressure the Weaver, right? He does need those items in farm to be impactful later on in the game, but he has the luxury of having a good lane phase. Yes. Scoochy, Gemini attack. Exactly. Those are going to be abilities that will help you... That's the big difference. Tear Shadow down the Fiend, he, he needs some babysitting. Yeah. And we'll probably see that in the roaming of the Elder Titan. Right, clockwork being banned out. Last ban for Team Secret. What are we looking for from Optic? You said Tiny could be played as a carry, or, or in the mid lane rather, and then Razor could be played in the safe lane. Yep. They have a Sand King, which theoretically could go off lane if that were the case. They could also send the Tiny in the off lane, play the Sand with, King. With uh, the... the Lich, they have a lot of flexibility. Exactly. Uh, even the Razor could go mid with the Lich, and then the wave's going to be on top of Razor's hill the entire time, so it'll be miserable for Shadow Fiend, early on at least. And so... Optic also have the last pick, so they can see what Secret are going to grab and say, let's exactly. tailor our draft to this. Now, yep. let's change what we want to do. That's the benefit of picking these heroes with uh, that level of flexibility where you can toss them into multiple lanes. So, Team Secret, they're thinking about what to ban, and they're going, shit, they can lane however they want. Yeah, they can do what whatever. Could potentially be the worst thing we could play against. Yeah, it's, it, it comes down to preference almost now at this point for Secret. What do we think we struggle with? What do we need to take care of? What do we think that Optic can play that they can ruin right. us with? What do we not want to play against? So, and they, they're going, we have a lot of reserve time being used for both of these teams, and Team Secret are going right down to it with now only six seconds left. They're really taking their time, and it is going to be the Broodmother, and I think that's a fine last ban when oh, you yeah. think about a hero that can just kind of fit in anywhere. Broodmother, you don't want to play up against that as a fifth pick hero. Exactly. He, Broodmother can actually go anywhere yeah. with this combination of cores, right? Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen, so very safe ban. Uh, Broodmother very good at drawing a lot of the heroes on the map, trying to take care of the Broodlings and the Broodmother herself, but they will take her out of the pool. No Broodmother available, and now Secret have their next pick. They don't have long to think about it, but they will be looking for their offlane hero, or at least they should be. And it will be the Nature's Prophet for Fala, oh, okay. for Secret. That's a pretty nice, uh, nice pick, because he can apply a lot of pressure, doesn't need too much help, and he can abuse lanes, right? Because you know Lich wants to be in that mid lane up against the Shadow. And with that Nature's Prophet, even if Lich comes down there, not a whole lot he can do against the Furion to begin with. So it, uh, it kind of pressures Optic into picking a hero that's naturally good against Furion in lane, or at least that isn't going to get pressured that much, so it limits their options, in theory, because they, they don't want to lose out on the lanes too bad. And they go for the Bounty, bounty Hunter. hunter. All okay, right. so now we're kind of getting a clearer picture, especially with the players picking their heroes. It is the Bounty roaming for PPD on the Lich, as we expected. Yep. The CC and C Tiny, so he is more of a tempo controller here, at least in the beginning stages of the game. The Pie Cat Razor and the 3-3 Sand King, so it was the offlane Sand King at the end of it. Yep, they decided that that's what they wanted to go with, and Bounty Hunter looks like a pretty good game. Playing against Shadow Fiend, playing up against Furion, you can always set up and find him, scout him out before you go gank him. And then you combine that with a huge burst potential from Tiny. Yeah. Looks good. Zai will, will have to get some work done for Optic if they want to win this game, as he did yesterday on the Dark Willow. And that certainly is a possibility. But Secret, their heroes, they were a little bit more cut and dry. We knew who was going to be playing what before the fifth pick even came out. Yep. It was just really a question of what is Fata going to play, and it is going to be the Nature's Profit. So how do we lay in this for Optic Gaming now? Is it going to be CC and C on the Tiny in the safe lane with PyCat's Razor in the mid? Because Razor versus Furion, with Furion, you know, range hero with the trees doesn't do a whole lot. Tiny, at least with the True Grab, has some AoE to clear through the trance and it's still a decent lane to pressure the Shadow Fiend? Or do you just put the Tiny in the mid lane to potentially dominate the Shadow Fiend with the help of Lich? These are some interesting questions that I don't have the answer for you until we get into the game. Perfect. So we'll find out, I guess. That's, that's the issue. That's right. So you have Track Gold to fall back on for Optic. Secret are playing a lot of their comfort heroes. I think they have a mid one Shadow Fiend, which is going to be nice for him, even if they are against the Tiny and the Lich. Ace on the Weaver. Um, Both fast-paced lineups. Yeah, I think so, too. I think it. I think it's faster paced for Optic because they have a razor to work with. He doesn't really. He needs like phased Rama Kila. Yeah, it feels like, and then you could just start ruining. You know, running tiny as that. well. Get some levels, ready to fight. Bounty hunter, same thing. Yeah. So in terms of the early game pressure, Optic, they definitely have it. But secret, they have the late game to fall back on as well. I mean, you're playing against Tiny, yes, but Shadow Fiend and a Weaver in the late game and a Nature's Prophet to split push. Yeah. That seems pretty good for Secret if they can get to that point of the game. Yeah, it definitely does if they can manage to get there. But of course, Track Gold is. Something not to underestimate, Mont. Yeah. We've seen it do some work. Again, though, Bounty Hunter now playing in the new patch. 7.10. The experience for the Bounty Runes is gone. 
getting to the level six. It was always hard beforehand. Bounty hunters would often be super low level at the early or at the late, you know, like ten minutes into the game. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be even worse now for bounty hunters. And we've already seen a few bounty hunters in this tournament, and they've had some good success. You know, with the lich mod, bounty hunter can afford to play more like a lane support, constantly harassing the uh, the fury on, mm -hmm. while lich soaks in experience in the mid lane. He's not. He shouldn't feel pressured to to get kills around the map. All he has to do is lane, give his uh, team some advantages in the lanes, and since mid already has that advantage. Not the, a whole lot he really needs to accomplish. He yeah. can just focus on himself. Alone time. Some alone time indeed. We'll see how the lanes shape up though. In the meantime, 3-3 is going to be heading up to the top lane. The Razor, or excuse me, the Weaver is down bottom for Ace. They did drop a ward uh, and a sentry, both of which are blocking this camp for Optic. That's, uh, that's a lot of emphasis on this small camp here, making sure they just don't have the pole available. Yeah, it's a big deal. Okay, so we have Tidy in the mid, and we have the Sand King in the safe lane up against the Nature's Prophet. And it's actually the Lich in the off lane with PyCat's Razor. That is going to be quite interesting, actually. Razor against Weaver is not the best in the yeah. world for Razor, but with the help of Lich, it is very annoying. Chikuchi is going to be great for Ace. He'll be able to get out of any real tough situation. Yep. And they have Puppy to fall back on as well with decent base damage on Witch Doctor. It's a weird lading phase, really, from both teams, other than the mid lane, which I guess was kind of expected. And that thing's the red rocket, huh? They've already found Zai in the top lane with the, the sentry, so now Zai knows that's uh, that's there. But that shouldn't really cause too much chaos for this Optic team. But Fada has really good base damage. It already has a Blightstone to zone out 3-3, and the Treants will help out as well. And this is, you know, we talked about Sand King against melee matchups. That's not really this against, uh, you know, <laughs> right. when there's When there's assistance. Right, it's not uh, the easiest lane in the world. Even without it, right, the Nature's Prophet with the range right clicks, the Blightstone, it does a ton of damage, but once there's that help in the Elder Titan, can't really come up at all. Yep, goes for the Sandstorm. Yeah, this, this makes sense. You're just like, all right, well, I can't really cross a finale this game. I'm going to get auto attack down. I might as well just get experience. Mid lane, Zai's rotating in, but there is a sentry, and now Zai will know that there, in fact, is that sentry on the other side of the river. He'll try to hit mid one. He'll drop his own sentry, tango it out. That's going to be huge for Zai later into the oh, game, no. but the double raise comes in. Okay, he does okay. fairy fire, and mid one might have to back himself up and uh, try to get off a couple of auto attacks more, but mid one was able to find any more damage, so that's, that's the, just time wasted, I think. That's the raise nerf damage stacking up right there, Mont. Yeah. Keeps Zai alive. And mid one... He's only got one last hit. He's against a tiny. This is not an easy lane, even without the Lich. CCNC is still having a great time. Yep, he is indeed. Optic Gaming's lane is looking pretty good, actually. You'd expect that with the uh, the Lich, of course, even up against the Weaver. And 33 has made the top lane work for him. Yeah, so we'll find himself, I think, both bounty runes. Zai is going to try to chase him down, but it won't really be enough. A nice play from Yapsor. Again, though, it's... In Important to note that this is secret with some good late game heroes. So even if they don't get off to the fastest start, see if they can't get back. But uh, Fada's having a great time. Stomp on Zai. That's going to be a sleep. This might be first blood. He's out of range. The sentry not quite there. And Zai just barely able to survive. That would have been close for secret, but not able to do it. Yep, very, very close, but unable to make it happen. And sentries everywhere for secret, huh? Mid and in the top lane. Yeah. I guess mid got eaten. They're ready for the Bounty Hunter rotations, and they know Bounty Hunter can't really kill the Weaver lanes, so they don't have to worry about that. They've covered their bases. That is true. The bottom lane's going to be fine for um, the secret lineup. Ace isn't getting the most last hits. Pycat's ahead, but not by much. And, and again, with Shikuchi, Ace should be fine. Yep, and the, the Frost the static Armor, too. Well, the Frost Armor makes it so that Weaver doesn't actually want to attack Pycat. Well, Ace Shikuchi'd aggressively, so he does lose out on 97 damage. So as I say that, or rather 101 damage, as I say that, PyCat's able to find the damage link and get some extra auto attacks and some last hits. Yep, complete lane domination. 3-3 still having a rough time in the top lane for Sand King as the Astral continues. The staple gun or the briefcase, it's actually the baby rattle in this game for Yapsor. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, he's got a multitude of weapons. Well, let's talk about more about this uh, mid lane here. Shadow Fiend manages to pick up some more last hits as he gets some levels. But still, once Tiny picks up the experience, it gets so dangerous for Shadow Fiend, right? Any sort of rotation, and we're probably looking at a dead Shadow Fiend. And it's not exactly the same scenario for a mid one. Rotation comes in, well, Tiny's got 1,000 HP with the wand. At the very least, it's easier for mid one to last hit now. That's true. And that's all he needs. He seems to be still having a great time. Zai, still level one. 
I suppose that's to be expected when you're playing a bounty hunter. Man. It's so... It's so odd. Hold finally picks up to level 2. But still, right? We're seeing our most roaming four position heroes pick up level 2 around 4 minutes into the game. <laughs> it's so different from before. It's pretty rough. It's pretty rough to be a four position hero. Yapsor and Puppy, I think, are doing okay. They're both three. They're a level ahead of Zai. But the amount that Zai is giving in vision and... The difference is Yapsor has just been leaning up top the entire time, right? Yeah. And he's actually done okay in zoning out the Sand King. But Sand King somehow has 15 last hits without even costing Finale. The Sandstorm must be adding up and a couple of auto attacks here and there. Able to get some last hits going his way. Yep. Look at how careful mid one is. He knows something's up. Yeah, this is uh, it's a slight advantage for Secret, but that's it at this point. And I think a lot of it comes from Fada. 29 last hits. They have the stop coming. I don't. They still have the Sentry available, but he's outside of it. The Burst Strike comes in, and Sandstorm is on cooldown for another 18 seconds. He'll go for the TP instead. They do force him out of the lane. It is five minutes, so he can Shrine, and that's exactly what 3-3 will do. All right. Pretty slow game, just lane phase focused. Lane phase focused. It's a pretty normal with a lich, honestly. It's just what happens. Static link has a Shikuchi's in. Going to be 42 damage stolen. The frost blast comes. I has an auto attack with Janata. The slow is there. Three second cooldown. Good wand usage, and Ace might be able to survive because of it. The plasma field was not in time, oh. and the bottle charge keeping him alive as well. Meanwhile, the top lane three three getting spreaded up. Yapsor chasing him down. He's already used the stomp. Three three has another burrow in two seconds. That might keep him alive. He's got the glowing blade to work with as well. He will burrow onto the other side of the tree line and get back to safety. So a couple of missed kills, a couple of missed opportunities for both Optic and Secret. Oh man, these are not easy kills to get at all. Like, trying to chase the Weaver down after Shikuchi's on cooldown almost worked out, but not quite close enough. I imagine it's going to be in the mid lane, but look at that sentry. It's going to scout Zai. Yep, they see him, but here it is. And one still getting run at the avalanche toss combination, getting low, but he's got the raindrops, and it's not enough to get the kill. They thought about TPing in the nature's prop, they decided not to. Puppy rotated in. Cass will go. That's the raindrop for CC and C. The Maldic goes, but CC and C still tanky. He has a self to work with. Close kills on both sides, but again, nothing getting done. That's the, uh, that's the back off. Right? Nice to get out of here. Yeah, get out of here. Get out of my mid lane. But CC and C doesn't seem to be too concerned. And Zai will make his rotation back to the top lane. They'll look for Fada. He has a full level advantage on 3-3. They use the Mango. The Burst Strike comes in the Stomp. They avoid it, but not Zai. Zai has been caught. They have the Sentry available, but again, he's just out of it. He's got the Shadow Walk, but the Punch comes oh. in. The Fate Time was there. That was a lot of damage. And Fata secures the kill onto Zai. That's first blood at seven minutes into this game, Brax. Yep, and you would typically think, well, there's a Bounty Hunter in this game. A bit more fast-paced, but... Still, big kill. Especially going for, uh, you know, Fada got the first blood money. That's going to help him dominate this lane even more. I mean, yeah, he's already done a great job. He's already up to five. He's getting close to six. He's got treads to work with. Everything is going well for Fata. And conversely, for CCNC in the mid lane, up to 3,300 net worth. He's the top net worth hero. Yeah. And looking for Puppy, maybe a dive. The cast coming in. The stomp about to come through. It will hit. There's the Nature's Wrath. They need a TP in. Mid one looking for a raise. The Avalanche comes out. The Sprout misses, but CCNC has to avoid it. Driving, walking up to the north. They will be able to keep him alive as Zai can kind of come in and throw Janata if he wants to. And CCNC plays that nicely. They, that's a lot of rotations from Secret, and they, they still can't get the kill there. Yeah, that's free room for a 33 Sand King up top. He's, <laughs> he's uh, sneaking on through, getting these bounty runes. Yep, he's the bounty rune hunter of this game. That's one th That's one way to get some farm if you're having kind of a tough lane down bottom. Yeah. It was an uh, intelligent pick up the bottle, because he can help secure these runes all the time. Yeah, it gives him that sustain to match the Lich. So there is a 2k lead for Secret now. Uh, it kind of came out of nowhere, it feels like. Well, yeah, I mean, it's uh, mostly on Fada, right? The net worth leader. They were able to get so much out of the lane with the help of um, Yabsor's Elder Titan. He just sat up there. Yeah. Zai has rotated around so much and he's gotten so little experience for it. Yep. We always talk about the Bounty Hunter at level 6, right? That's the key thing when playing this hero. Mm -hmm. One of the tracks going to come out. It's always a, a big difference maker in team fights. Not quite there yet or anywhere near close, really. Yeah, I mean, he's got a ways it's to rough. go. 
They need to like rotate out of the mid and give Zai that mid lane experience, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Or just give him a kill. But the way things are going, Puppy and Yapso are completely fine with the experience they're getting. Meanwhile, they've got top, the Sandstorm comes in, but it, it seems that 3-3, three, three, that's the only way he can really farm now. Yep. And, uh... Right, it's slow and steady in this game. Secret with that 2k advantage. He's getting zoned out, but still finding some farm. He is not that far behind Pycat. He's only about 200 gold. Yeah. In a lane that he's kind of struggled in, but... Ace is still finding that farm with the bounty runes and with a couple of last hits here and there. Pycat's got almost double his last hits, but Ace has picked up so many bounty runes, he's kept uh, pretty close in the network department. Yeah. Uh, but that means Pycat should be a hill uh, ahead in the experience, and that's absolutely true. Level oh, yeah. 7 to level 5 for the Weaver. That's the one big difference between these opposing uh, one position players. Yep, big time. They will find Puppy with a Janata hit. They'll drop the Sentry, but Zai is already out of there as soon as he gets in. It's just, now I'm kind of wondering, is there stacks around here? Is that what we're falling back on for some of these players? I mean, 3-3 three, is taking a jungle camp. He's trying to get to an early blink dagger. But it, it is slowed down. Mid one's in the jungle now. Yep. The game's hit that spot where uh, farm time, Mont. We're going to push our lanes out, kill some jungle camps in between. We need to get to some big key items like blink dagger on Sand King. Get some levels up on our support heroes. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's the big key for Zai. I don't want to harp on it too much, but that is the big key. I do like the build for Ace. He has picked up the bottle. He had an arcane rune. He's going to pop it. The Sprout is in. Now Pycat might be in trouble. I think he's trying to TP, but the Stomp comes through. Actually has the TP still available, but he will fall regardless one way or the other. The Salve was available too, but that's not going to matter. That's a very big pickup for Secret. That is Pycat getting dropped. The second kill of the game, and they might find a third, but the Pro Strike from 3-3 is there in time. Still. It's so big to push a hero like uh, Razor out of that lane because it's now it shows that it's dangerous for him to be there, right? Any sort of fury on rotation in and he could die, meaning he can't play up as far as he'd like to. And it puts him in an awkward position like, uh, where does he go now? Does he TP top to farm? Do you want to go back, back down, down bottom? bottom yeah. yeah, that same thing could happen again. And, th and that was great for Secret because not only d does it give that kill to them, but it also gives some more room for mid one in the jungle. The bounty hunter was like forced to go down bottom and be trying to help him for a second. He's rotated back mid though. So mid one will get more and more farm, and he's just behind Fada and Secret. They are feeling it in these top two net worth heroes. Yep, they have found so much farm in these lanes. The lanes have gone extremely well for them. Which is surprising to say, up against the Lich, like, Optics awfully didn't go poorly or anything, but it's actually, it went well, you know? But you'd expect a bigger advantage with the Lich, just didn't happen. Maybe it comes down to this Yapsura Elder Titan just sitting top for a while and getting that Fada advantage. Oh, it definitely does, because Sand King, while you think, oh, he's going to do fine in lane with the Caustic, has to go for the Sandstorm, and it's just not the same. Just the Astral alone, the Stomp threat. Exactly. It's enough to push 3-3 out of the lane numerous times. He did a good job surviving 3-3. He hasn't died, where they tried going on him three times. Speaking of getting gone on, it's going to be Fata. He's level 9. He's very tanky. He's got treads. He's got the Oblivion Staff. The Janata will go, barely doing anything. There's the Burrow Strike. They should have enough to kill him. The Avalanche Toss combination is there, and CC and C will secure that kill. Yeah, picking up a big kill on the Fury on there. And CC and C closing it on the Blink Dagger. That's the big playmaking item, Mod. I mean, they're getting close on both the heroes. Him and 3 3 on the Sand King. Pycat is going to. Uh, he's not opting for the phase drum. He's gone instead for the treads four staff for Pycat. He's getting rather close to that force on this razor. Yep, four staff very nice up against the Furion Sprout and the Elder Titan Stomp. Even if you do get stomped, you can four staff teammates out of there. Very nice against that. Ace has a Midas. Wow. Yeah, this farm, the bounty runes, just getting a couple CS and a kill. You know, an assist, I should say. That is, they have not really taken any pressure to their towers. They have plenty of time for this Midas to get up and running. Ace is feeling very comfortable now, I would assume. Yeah, I really like this play from Fada. Look at where he warded. It's not going to scout Optic because they are smoked, but he TP'd up onto that cliff, warded and TP'd out. Helps you place these deep wards undetected. Just another integral part of Nature's Prophet. You know, this might play against Seeker because they think they're safe. You know, they got that sneaky ward down, but they're smoking. I don't know, they in. seem to be aware something's happening. I mean, look at Puppy's position with mid one also down here with the Sanj. 
I got a blink in. There's the avalanche. They're going to try to find Ace, and they will get the kill. The combo's enough with the shuriken toss, and Puppy might be next. Piecat getting low, though. He's got six charges. The Sprout is there, though, and Fado wants to fish him off. They've also got the Stomp, and Zai's in trouble. The Earth Splitter coming out. They're going to turn this round with the Burn Strike. The Chain Frost is going to bounce through. Is it going to be enough? CC and C is still alive. Mid one getting low, but 3 3 cannot bring him down the Sandstorm. The avalanche from the trees. It's a oh. double kill for Mid one. It's four for three. And as good as that looked for Optic, man, Secret were ready for it. They came back in. The Earth Splitter was beautiful, but it's not done yet. Fada, one auto attack, and we can CC and C get there. It's going to be close to the trees. It won't be enough, but they will turn and they will find CC and C. It is a bloodbath and secret find all five kills an optic what the hell was that fight it was nothing for the entire game brax and then at 14 minutes they're like let's go it's did, time did you see that cask on pie cat there's yeah. a full creep wave there pie cat's off on the side it hits him like three times <laughs> and he just ends up dying because of it. it's so sad mid one doing some work he does get dropped at the end but good play from yap to get in there throws in the earth splitter he had a great astral stomp to start things off and uh, that cast, you're right, Pycat died early in that fight. If he's alive and he has static link damage, things go vastly different for Optic. But of course, that's not the way it goes in secret. Get a 2 lead, and we're going to take a look at it as well. Pycat's already super low. Fada comes in with a sprout, finishes him off. There's that stomp I was talking about. Yaps or the four position. And that was a great chain frost, but there just wasn't any follow up after that. Mid one gets off the ultimate. They're able to bring down CC and C after mid one falls. Double kill coming out ridiculous fight an absolutely ridiculous fight Brax yeah complete bloodbath and unfortunately there was no track available in that team fight or else it could have gone a bit better for optic gold wise honestly for both teams they pretty much just traded gold they both got the same gold out of it really I mean I suppose that's the good news for optic is that Zai is level six the track is up yep it, it took that fight and a little bit extra to get that experience but he is there ace has a double damage rune He's also got a cloak. He's going for a Hood of Defiance. The item builds make sense against the heroes that he's playing. They have the range drop. The Burst Strike comes in the track, but he will time lapse it off and Shikuchi himself away to safety and get back up to his Ancients. Yep. And that's just more space for mid one in the top lane, too. Exactly. Both teams, they made the same exact play there. Take the offlane towers, set up for that, but Secret took it much, much faster with the Shadow Fiend physical damage along with the Furion Treants. PBD got the tower lasted. He's a rich you, guy. You don't really ever see that for a lich. 3-3 three, three takes a triple way, or triple raise, excuse me, and almost dies. Puppy can walk up and maledict him and might even actually kill him if he's not careful. They are TPing in though. Mid one is tracked up, Zai's on the back lines. The burrow strike comes out. 3-3 three, three still getting chased down by Fata as he was the one to TP in. They get off the orchid, so there's no static link for Pycat, and the raise will push him back even further. They're still chasing after Zai, who is dusted, but this is not an easy kill to find. The dust is about to wear off, and he's got enough for another shadow walk. And that'll take off the bug of the swarm. 3-3 three, three looking for a burst strike, but mid one is still there. Still tracked. Fata low. Half HP. In the meantime, farming mid is PPD. He is not coming to this fight. He's trying to defend his tier one tower. But this top lane could erupt at any moment for either of these teams. Yep, Team Secret backing off Optic. In a bit of an awkward spot, but they're not in any danger. So Team Secret have to be careful. They overstuffed. They could get bursted. But they're starting to get tanky mod. Yeah. Mid one Shadow Fiend. 1600 health with the uh, Strength Treads and the Sanjh. It feels like Optic have missed that timing with the Tiny, where you blink in, you use your Avalanche Toss combination. I'm not sure that's necessarily true, because you have Shuriken Toss, you have the Burrow Strike to follow up too. Right, there's a lot of magic damage from his teammates. It's not like the, the big solo kill potential that we're, we've seen against Shadow Fiend before, right? Where Tiny just blinks in and combos him for half the game and one-shots him. It's just not going to happen. And Weaver's also working towards the Hood. Yeah, Ace, he's got the Cloak, the Hood flying out now as we speak. Raindrops up to four charges of the Raindrops. Optic playing aggressively with Zai, getting more vision around the map, trying to find a way to poke and prod and get into the tier one tower in the top lane or to get a kill, I think would be preferable for Optic. They are working on the four staff for the Sand King. Fada is going to try to cut the creep wave top lane, make some treants, while Piecat pushes the tier one tower up in this lane. Yep, we talked about Team Secret's uh, late game with the scaling potential. They're actually TPing in, trying to make something happen. Pycat has a force. He might be able to get onto the high ground. I'm not sure they're going to chase him down. They have the Astral. They're going to wait for the Stomp. Pycat's going to head a different direction. The cast actually does come through. The Burrow Strike already done is, of course, the Sand King. Rather, Zai has fallen. Pycat getting dropped down. They had the Death Ward there. It's going to be everybody dead in the Roach Pit also. PPD's getting low as there was a big fight with Midwood coming out. Hey, and Ma, that was going to be the Shadow Fiend. Where did Optic go? Yeah, they just exploded. They all died. They actually just exploded. <laughs> Man. That is, uh, I think mid one is fine with that fight. Oh, he yeah. buys his Ogre Club, he's working on his BKB. CC and C will come into the mid lane. He has uh, the start of an SMY, but he's going to get Orchid. They really just want to finish off this tier one tower for Secret. 
But the, the way will be cleared by CCC. They might go with the Earth Splitter, though. He's tanky. I'm not sure if he's tanky enough. The Avalanche will come. They have the track on the Puppy, but he's getting run up by Yaps for the cast. The Maledict, that should take him down. The Toss comes out. He might get the kill before he dies, but he will, in fact, fall, and Yaps stays up and ready to go. The tower falls to Fata. They're keeping in with PPD. He needs a Frost Blast. He finds it, but it's not enough damage on the Yapsor, who is very tanky. It's secret. Now they have found themselves a 5k lead and a pretty terrific position in this game, Brax. Yeah, they're sitting very comfortably in this game. You know, the lane that was pressured the most on the side of Team Seeker was that the... Oh, here we go. We've got the Team Fight recap. This, this was all over the place. I didn't see what happened in the... Towards the Roche Pit. I know Pycat gets the Force up. They have Zai getting dropped with the Orchid. There's so much damage, especially with the Maladin. Death Ward, he tries to TP out. It was, uh... They threw up the Chain Frost. They almost brought mid one down. That's what we saw. They did actually get the kill, but not before he did too much work against the, the rest of Optic. Yeah, he got so much damage off before he died, and then they were able to just retaliate and get two kills afterwards. Ace was pressured heavily in this game early on, but he's made a swift recovery thanks to all those bounty runes and the hand of Midas. Yeah. And then he's picked up the hood, so good luck bursting him. I mean, they'll spot him now with Zai, but I don't think there's any way they can follow him. Yep. They have such mobile heroes. Fata TPing into the fray. Shadow Fiend with his high movement speed. Ace, which we... with the Shikuchi, of course. It's become so difficult for Optic to find pickoffs. Yeah, exactly. You know, they're looking aggressively for these heroes, but it's a Weaver with a hood and a 2000 HP Shadow Fiend in front of his tower. And then Fada's off on the side lanes, only summoning his trance, and he's got a Shadow Blade too. Not easy to find at all. No, I mean, they are all over the place, and Optic are in some serious trouble. Secret, of course. They can continue to play like this. Zai almost dies to the Nature's Wrath. In fact, he can get Chikuchi down. They dust him up, oh. and that will get the kill for Ace. They place the Sentry, divide Zai, and then he places an Observer Ward before oh. he dies, thinking it's nice and <laughs> sneaky, is... but... Ooh, rough stuff for Zai. He loses yeah. the Observer Ward and his life, and now they're going to lose maybe 3-3. Three, three. Good Blink Tag around in time, but the Sandstorm is there. Detection-wise, they, they should have some, but it, I don't think it's going to matter. 3-3 three, is able to burrow strike up to the high ground and get away. Yep, Slippery Sand King. So yeah, I mean, Secret Orb 5k, they can continue to split up the map and do what they've been doing in split pushing, but how do, Op how do Optic combat this? Like you said, they can't get they can't get kills, really. Yeah, well, they don't have the traditional, you know, super strong late game heroes. They have uh, a pretty strong mid game with the Bounty Hunter, and they have a lot of team fight on top of it, right? If they get some uh, multiple man Furrow Strike, Avalanche combos with, you know, Chain Frost on top, they could win fights. But Secret know that. That's why they're just choosing to split up the map. Ace is always off on his own, split pushing. He's so difficult to kill. So tanky that he knows he's not really likely to die. Mm -hmm. He can play in these aggressive positions. Afada, same thing. And then mid one just plays in the safe lane. Well, not actually the safe lane, but the safest possible lane near his tower with the support of his teammates behind. And it's just, there's no easy target. For Optic to find it all. Everyone's so difficult to kill. It, it's going to get harder because the BKB is done very yep. soon for mid one. He just needs another, you know, thousand gold or something along those lines. And then Ace is building a Lincoln Sphere, so good luck bursting him down. You have Fata, who is incredibly farmed, and uh, he can get whatever he wants. He can just not even really be in the fights if he doesn't want to be. Secret have positioned themselves in this game perfectly. It's a 6k advantage. It's 22 minutes in. Yeah, they haven't gotten the most towers in the world, but they've done everything that they've needed to do to get this advantage going the way. So Optic will try to find the only thing they can, and that's a smoke gank. And Secret are grouped up and in the perfect position. CC and C smoke Smoke's will break broken. the Astral is there. He has the blink available, but he doesn't use it. The Haste Rune going, the cask is bouncing now, and Secret are ready to fight. Pycat is going to go ahead and just siege the tower in the meantime. CC and C still slept up. He has the ice armor now, finally coming out of it. They'll toss, but the, the glyph is there in time, so the toss damage doesn't go onto the tower. Mid one ready to fight. BKB not quite done, but with SMY, he has his ultimate backup, and Fata continues to pressure this top lane, or whatever lane is really available for him to pressure. Yep, look at this, TPing down to the bottom lane, right to hit the tower. Yeah, it's just, Free money. this is exactly what you would expect out of a Nature's Prophet. You've got yourself an advantage, you don't need to be in the fight, you could just be all over the map, and he will get more free money, you, as you just mentioned. Bot is so far. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's only a 6k lead, Brax, but... It's only a 6k lead, but Optic can't break this, uh, this split push at all. You know, they need to be able to find these kills behind towers and these tricky scenarios. I don't but think they've gotten one track kill yet. No, I don't think so either. They've been unable to find any sort of engagement just because Secret is split pushing so well. Yeah. Mid one never leaves the mid lane. They have a tier one tower with Witch Doctor near him. It's just the same setup every time, but they might Maybe find Maybe they Fata. can find Fada here. This they have the track up. Maybe their first one. 
This could be a big kill. The Orca, he might die, actually, if he's not careful. Optic Zai is in trouble. He will stay alive, but the Soul Burn, it's going to be enough. What a play from Fada to get that kill. They will finally bring him down, and they bring him down first. Now the empty center, they got the burst strike coming in. They're looking for Puppy. He's getting low, but not to get the Frost Blast coming in. There's the Static Link, but Pycat, it's actually still doing so much damage. 105, he already used the Static Link earlier in the fight, actually. And now he's going to use that damage to push into the tower, but the Static Link damage will fall. And they have taken two, and it's a two-for-one trade for uh, Optic at the end of the day. Yeah, very nice. They made something happen, but it's a start, right? They need more. They need to keep finding these pickoffs. It's a shit ton of gold, by the way. 1,500. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. kind of insane. Yep. I think Zai is fine with giving up his life, but the fact that Fada was still able to get that kill is... Yeah, it was a nice heads-up play by Fada. Exactly. It's so worth it being able to kill the Furion just to get him off the map. All of a sudden, Pycat's a net worth leader. How did that happen? Yeah, that uh, kind of came out of nowhere, but, uh, well, the track kill, of course, is going to be the main way. Yep. Um, BKB now done for mid one. And despite Secret losing that tier one tower on the top lane, they still have a 5k lead. Uh, of course, Zai is going to continue to try to gain map control. They actually lose their courier. Fata snipes it. Fod has been everywhere, Brax. He's literally been everywhere. Oh, well, that's what happens when you can teleport anywhere. I just suppose that's true. You're not wrong, my friend. CCNC pushing the tower. 3 3 has been spotted by Puppy. He does have the burrow strike. The cast will come in the force away. They're going to try to leave. He can burrow down to the low ground into the river if he wants to. Or across. We can try for it, but CCNC blinks out of trouble. The tier 1 tower is something they drastically want, but they can't quite get it yet. Zai is looking for a target. I think he walked over the sentry. They knew he was there. Ace is going to use the uh, Shikuchi. They find the Burrow Strike onto Yapsor. They get off the Shuriken. The dust will come in. It's actually going to be the Dire Dust trying to find Ace, but he was able to get out yep. and avoid it. You know, as soon as there's any sort of uh, scrappy fight, any sort of engagement, Bot always TPs up to a side lane, pushes it out, tries to apply some pressure that way. Secret need to keep dodging and scaling so that they can avoid this period where Optics Gaming's lineup is extremely strong, right? They hit a very hard mid-game peak, and if they can actually last, they should be in good hands, but Optic are playing extremely aggressive, looking for these opportunities, and they're making it happen. Yeah, they need to make it happen, the thing for Optic. They won't be able to handle mid-1 and ace later into the game. I mean, this is a Midas Weaver, and he went Hood of Defiance for C. Now he's the Lincoln Sphere. He's not really have the most damage in the world, but he doesn't need it. Just needs to stay alive for now. Yep, it's all about that survivability, so you can keep pushing out these lanes aggressively. Like, now that he has the Lincoln Sphere, it's even... I don't think they can kill him on the side lanes. Like, he's it's so hard. Died once. I don't know if he's going to die again for some time. But they will try to find the Tier 2 in the bottom lane for Optic. They actually have a double damage on Zai, and they will take the Tier 2 down. And that's Zai getting the last hit on the tower. So they've cut the lead kind of in half since... Uh, you know, they were almost up 7,500. It's now 4K. Yeah, all of a sudden two kills, apparently. Yeah, the track is significant. Bata is building into a nullifier. <laughs> this guy is... Well, he is playing an Ancient Prophet with essentially free split push, so... Well, so far. CCNC is going to get cast up. He did take the tower. The death board comes out. Ace is there. They have the... Uh, Frost Blast to break the Lincoln Sphere. PPD will go for a TP out. The Stomp does hit onto CCNC. This is a big kill if they can find it, and they should be able to. Ace's Mana Burn is coming oh, in, and that's is enough that to get Roche? the kill with mid one. And yeah, here we go. Straight into Roche. Fada TP's in. They have an Orchid. They have a Shadow Blade. And this will fall rather quickly, one would assume. Oh, man. These... You know, we see games where there's a whole bunch of kills at the back and forth bloodbath. This game, not so many kills, but these kills mean so much, right? That one single pickup next to the Roche Pit. Gonna make a team with Furion, Shadow Fiend, and Weaver. They all have good Roshan abilities, negative armor between two of the heroes, and you have some summons to tank it up to. It just means so much, right? And you have this lineup that wants to be able to find pickoffs and kills, and they have to fight into this Aegis. Fight into the Aegis of mid one, along with the BKB, now working on a butterfly. Shadow Fiend, still quite the hero, especially when you can get farm, and he certainly has it. Break the Lincoln Sphere. Zai trying to chase after Ace. I think he just wants to be a nuisance now. There's not actually anything he can do. CCNC is still dead for 10 minutes. Or 10 seconds, rather. Excuse me. Um, 10 minutes. Nice. Yeah, that would be pretty long, let me tell you. Pycat's still the top net worth hero in the game. And he's been using Eye of the Storm off cooldown. Yep. And uh, he continues to just try to farm, farm as much as he possibly can. And when you look at the net worth, Pycat leading, and then three secret heroes. And they're all doing quite well. 
They will have the nullifier done for Fata, which we, we were just pointing out. There's also the uh, Yapsor Atos. Oh, he just bought that. Burrow Strike, but Fata is Shadow Bladed. Zai doesn't have the... He does have Dust, but he doesn't know that Fata's down here. Yep. You know, he has the Lotus... Or, sorry, he has the Nullifier and the Orchid, but there's already a Lotus Orb complete from 33. He can remove these effects. That's true. It's not going to have that huge impact that we've seen so far. So it's up to 33 to get these Lotus Orbs off to keep your... I would assume Carry Heroes alive, like CCNC, who wants to use this BKB or PyCag trying to get his BKB and Force Staff off. Yeah. Absor is walking up. They might go for a fight here. The Stomp is there. They've got the Blink Burrow coming in. They have the track as well. The Dust will go through the Static Link, and Yapsor will drop the Earth Splitter, but he will fall. He is rooted onto Pycat, so he will take damage, but nothing significant. That is a track kill, and that will net you a fair amount of gold for Optic. Yeah, Optic, even though they lost Roshan, they're still, they're still doing very well. They're applying pressure in two lanes, finding kills. You know, they're finding kills in ways where they're baiting teams here out of their base, right? Four staffs, the Stomp comes in. Very unexpected. They even get a ward on the high ground. I think Secret Notice is there. They might be able to deward it later. They don't have the sentries yet. Uh, they're fighting into this Aegis. I mean, there is no Elder Titan for 20 seconds, but Optic are not being dissuaded. They're going to try to take this tier 2 tower. The Nature's Wrath will try to slow them down. Zion on the high ground. Ace was trying to get behind them. Shikuchi. They don't take the tier 2. They, I think, need to back up as Fata is going to be TPing and splitting up and getting the tier 2 tower top lane. Yep, they're going to need to back up eventually to deal with the split push, but they're doing a really good job of keeping Team Secret on their side of the map so they can't use that Aegis effectively. Ooh. They didn't get the deny. CCNC, I think, was mid-attack. They might have just been hitting the Treants instead. But that is going to be Fox securing the tower. That's a plus four Treants summon talent for the Nature of Prophet coming into play. Wow. That's a lot of trees. <laughs> Actually, it really is. He's also working on now the Bloodthorn. Yeah, Optic Gaming are doing a very good oh. job. Epi Center getting channeled for 3 3. The Burrow Strike is there, but where's the follow up damage? Fata can walk out now that the Stomp is there to Shadow Blade, and 3 3 is going to fall. He tries to go for a solo kill into Fata, but Fata had the Shadow Blade at the ready, and he will TP back to base. That would have been a big kill could he, fi uh, could he find it, but now he's dead for 63 seconds, and he gives even more gold to Fata. Doing a very good job of keeping the game competitive. Right, Team Secret still pushing the entire game, looking to, to dodge, but Optic Gaming are finding the initiations. Yeah. Clearly that didn't work out there. Didn't but, do the math on the epicenter damage, but still. It's true. They are... Uh, lower the gold lead, or the gold deficit, I yeah. guess. They have good vision around the, the Radiant base. They've kept the waves pushed in. They just lost their tier 2 tower, which has been alive for a pretty long time, all things considered. Yeah. You know, I do like Ace building into another nullifier. Yes, wow. you have a Lotus Orb on one of your heroes. You get two Nullifiers, that should do the job. Wowzers. And he doesn't really care if he nullifies himself since he can just time lapse. Yeah, it's not a big deal. And Secret are starting to get aggressive. They have the Aegis for another 40 seconds. Getting the Tier 2 Tower mid would be the perfect bounty for them. And mid one will just stand here and siege. They are split pushing top for Optic with Pi Cat and Zai. They can TP back. They want to. The Frost Armor is so annoying with sieging towers. That's Slow something we, we haven't addressed, but it. No, Burrow Strike comes in 3 3, has the Lotus Orb on him. He's fine for now. But yeah, the, the Frost Armor makes sieging high ground, even with the East Heroes, pretty difficult. Yeah, just takes so much longer. And look at the wards coming out from Optic. They know that they've been playing up against the split push the entire game, and now they have these deep wards to scout out these heroes to make plays. There it is. And as expected, Zai is getting a, a Lotus Orb of his own. And the uh, CCNC at mid one. These guys, it's been kind of a quiet game, surprisingly enough, for both of them. Yeah. They haven't been involved in the most kills. Mid one had a pretty good stretch in the beginning of the game, finding a couple of uh, Requiem kills and Rage kills. CCNC, that Blink Dagger, hasn't done that much. He's found maybe a kill or two. But... Well, that's only because there's only been like a kill or two since then. Yeah, it's true. Nine uh, kills total for Optic, 16 for Secret, and then they come in bursts. Usually it's those, those you know, team fights where they lose four or five heroes that we saw at the beginning of the game. But there are items coming out, not just for Secret, but for Optic as well. AC for CCNC. He has the full BKB, the full SMY. Uh, Pycat, we've discussed that he was getting Shivas, and he is, in fact, there. He has the Shivas done as soon as he wants it. Yep. Once he gets to the secret shop, rather. Smoke up from Optic. Team Secret have been clearing out some wards thanks to Yapsor's recently purchased gem. 
They can take that away. Antic. But they might find Ace instead. Oh, he's right in the trees, but they have Lynch. They have the toss available, but Ace is able to shoot you away, and they have the Burrow Strike that misses. And now, Secret are coming in. They have BKB, they have Butterfly mid one. The track is there, the Force away. 3-3 three, three, trying to get out as well. The Burrow Strike, it's Mass Exodus for Optic. They're trying to leave in mid one, is hunting them down. He really wants to go for this. Fata is there with the Shadow Blade. He's got the Bloodthorn, but he cannot find Zai. They don't have the detection. And it turns out that the BKBs won't matter for either side. They won't be able to find kills one or the other. Mid one didn't even have to use his, surprisingly enough. Huh. That was they, strange. They weren't able to break the uh, the Lincolns on Ace's Weaver, so 33 was waiting on the Burrow Strike for someone to break it, but unfortunately, no one could, so a bit of a missed opportunity there, but, you know, at least Team Secret have to react. Nothing happens. That's basically what happened, Mont. Nothing. Nothing, indeed. Ace, it was such a tough target to, like, I think... They wanted anybody else but Ace, more than yeah, likely. Yeah, yeah, It would have been so much easier, but now Team Secret, they're going to smoke up. Aegis has run out. Shadowfiend has a full butterfly but complete. There's that DD for CC and C. He might walk into the entire enemy team, though. Zai is scouting, and he, he realizes there's nobody around that. They'll see that Fox is TP'd in, but they know that was going to happen. Now the question is, where are the rest of the heroes? And I think they're starting to understand for Optic that, yeah, they're around mid, maybe into our jungle. Yep. Maybe CC and C gets jumped, potentially. He's not careful. He clears out that creep wave so fast, they're not even going to have a chance. Yeah. They're Just looking for anything. Trees. Yep. And now the smoke is done, and they haven't found anything with it. They, can, they, they did get some wards down. I th think that ward was placed just now. Yeah, they got a good ward in the mid lane. That'll give them some extra vision. So it wasn't all fruitless for Secret. They did get the vision that they wanted. Yep. Vision is the name of the game, especially at this part. Bata was split pushing bottom with the Shadow Blade, but... Optic will get down there. What do you think about having these Tinker Wards? I know that there's a Tinker Ward for the Radiant team. I'm surprised that Dyer don't have it right now. It would be pretty useful on the Dyer, but they can afford to get these other wards that give a bit more vision, you know, to help uh, against the split. Oh, push. here we go. They've got the Ato. Zai avoids the stomp with the Shuriken. Avalanche coming in. They've got the Toss Combination. That'll be a dead puppy. Not the biggest kill in the world for Optic, but... The yeah, epicenter is getting channeled, looking for Ace. That's the Lincoln Sphere broken. They've got the track. They've got the Shirk and the time lapse gets off the time. Ace, the Lincoln Sphere is still broken. They've got the static link. They need more follow-up though. Now the Avalanche, the toss coming in. Is it gonna be enough? He's low. He gets through. It's the hood of defines, but it will not keep him alive. The plasma Up field, top. two dead, and there it is. Fata with the rat. The tier three damage. It's a lot. It's already pretty much below half HP and getting lower and lower. And they have to come and deal with it. So that is a great fight for Optic. It's a lot of kills, it's a lot of track gold. But it is going to be a lot of damage done by Fata, and again, he continues the split push for this Nature's Prophet. That's going to be a constant problem throughout the game. You know, this is why this hero has been seen all throughout the years, right? He's always had that strong split push pressure. And even when you win a fight like that, you have to worry about your side lanes. God. Only a 3k goal for Team Secret, though. I mean, Optic are coming back into this game quite nicely. Yeah, it is... It's kind of crazy how back and forth it is, and the experience tells an even, di even different story, so... I like that Fox is building a BKB next. I thought he would get it earlier, because again, there, there's a lot of magic damage for Optic. Yeah, with that BKB, he can afford to just split push and BKB TP out, and bait that way. Yeah. Get a lot more done. It's not... And it also gives him the uh, team fight potential, right? You can just TP in, use the BKB. Doesn't really matter where you are. All right. High cat still top, then that worth Fata closing in. Well, the game always together. comes down to who can jump who first, right? For that, you need heroes that can actually do that, like Sand King, like the Tiny. When you look at Team Secret's lineup, they don't really have that, because they have these three uh, three cores that are carries, right? They're damage dealers. Then you look at the support staff, Elder Titan, better for the counter initiation. Witch Doctor, pretty much the same thing. The cask is slow, and uh, it's not really that leading stun. So that's why they're running into some big issues now. They've been going for the Orchid into the Nullifier on both, um, you know, on some of their heroes. But it's just not the same. It's not yeah. that instant blink stun, so they've been struggling to find these openings. Ooh, Puppy will get hit by the Avalanche, but only for a bit. He still will fall, though, as CCNC just clubs him down with his fist. This is at the perfect time, dude. This is Roshan. Um, but you are fighting into an Elder Titan. And yep. that's what, what Elder Titan is good against. He might not be the best, you know, strict initiator. But he has the Astral Stun, and then he has the Earth Splitter to... He's really good at keeping control over an area. Yeah. But I agree with you in the sense that 
they don't quite have that blink initiation that we just saw from CC and C. Yeah, Secret had a good lane phase, but now they're struggling off. Oh, Happy Zappy. center, Ace. They were looking and set for mid one, but he's able to get away. He still has his BKB, I believe, and he's just on the run. Bike had speedy, but I'm not sure they could be able to chase him down. He forces himself away. CC and C jumps into the stomp. He times it just a bit too poorly, and that is going to lead to them backing up. They don't even get the BKB. Mid one's been holding on to that for a long time. Yeah. It's ten still seconds. 10 seconds, yeah. Let's see if Zai... They spotted Fata. They don't have dust on Zai. But Zai seems to understand that he's around here. He's following him around, but Fata... Yep. Scanned as well, so he knows he's still here. He's it's still gonna here. run out. Oh, can they find him? It's gonna be close. There it is, he's TPing in, they've got the shuriken, they've got the track up now, Fata, this could be a big kill. He'll track for the TP, but the avalanche is there, the frost blast, the toss in, Fata should fall, the burrow strike comes out, and that's him dead for 78 seconds. And Secret were on the move into the mid lane, but they weren't able to find the backup for Fata in that top lane as he was too far away. Still, this, could this be time for Roche? I think so. If not Roche, then they need to find a, well, they can easily find a team fight. They oh, have boy. found Pycat. This is a big kill. It should be if they can get it done. He gets the force off of the BKB in time. He's low, but they will send him back to base. Or at the very least, the Shrine, but that Shrine is not available. He still Pycat. has Maldic on him, He might die to the last oh, tick. Oh, the last tick is going to be close. It actually brings him down. Oh, my God. They just couldn't keep him alive. That is unbelievable, and a huge kill for Secret. Oh man, with no Shrine being available, no Urn to get And they're gonna maybe find it again, the Atos, but Zai's forced out this time. No Nullifier to come through. And that could have been Roche. CC and C is still in the pit. But well, talking about lack of catch, well, you can build it in the forms of Hex, Atos, Orchid, Nullifier, right? And you could rely on those Lotus Orbs, but if you're not there to use them, like that's gonna have a rough time. The Sand King was still dealing with top. Wow. Usually when you're able to, uh... So if you're on delays the game for a really long time, but if he ever gets picked off and the enemy team is able to force an engagement, some sort of objective, like a tower or Roshan, for example, then you kind of crumble because you're unable to fight. But Team Secret, with the heads-up play, they managed to pick off Pycat, and now Roshan's looking like theirs, especially with that DD on Weaver. They have vision of this rope pit, Roche Pit, but it's already too late. Secret are going to take this Aegis and, and, and Cheese as well. Died so fast. Yeah. The, the Pycat was not even close to being respawned. And he, of course, didn't want to buy back. Zai will go for a TP Puppy. Almost there with the cast, but he couldn't quite find it in time. And Fatsa going to get caught by CCNC and drop. CCNC gets a solo kill for it. Seems like the first time in this game, Brax. Yeah, very nicely done. And that's again with the Furion off the map for 75 seconds. Off the game, it can get their lanes out and potentially look for pickoffs. This Sand King has a hex now. Wow. 3 3 Lotus Orb hex. The gem was purchased by PPD. He's got a Blink Dagger, four staff. They have the tools to combat Secret, but Secret have, have the Aegis and Cheese. And this net worth continues to stay at about 3k for Team Secret. Yep, look at Optic down bottom. They're set up in the trees. PyCat TP down, looking for anyone that'll. You know, split push since, oh, our Furion just died, we can't fight, let's get our lanes out as fast as possible, but Team Secret playing very safe, knowing that they could feed going out there. Good play. In spite of having this Aegis and Cheese, Brax, mm -hmm. Optic are doing a pretty good job of, I mean, well, yeah, they killed Fata, so that's one big reason why they're not pushing, but they've done a good job of uh, keeping the waves pushed out and still kind of controlling this map. It's so hard for Team Secret to get them out when Fata's dead because they know that they will lose the team fight without their fear. You know, yeah. This is actual math, four on five. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, it's not like some support that you're missing out on. This is your big damage dealer, or at least one of them. Yep. Nullifier, BKB, Bloodthorn, Sil uh, excuse me, Shadowblade, which will turn into a Silver Edge soon when he gets enough money for it. Yep, and Optics heroes are so good at picking heroes off from the silence. Bounty Hunter can give you that deep vision, can also scout these kills out. We have the Hex picked up on Sand King now as well, and Boots of Travel and Razor helps him get from lane to lane quickly. And as we just saw, CCNC can apparently solo kill D. He's got enough damage out of solo kill Furion. Yeah. He does a ton of damage. So CCNC feels good about that. He also feels good about uh, something we haven't talked about, which is going to be the status resistance from the grow. 40% extra. Yep. Not to mention the bonus armor and bonus damage. That's what happens when you grow up here. Status resistant. He's the only one. He's really the only one that gets that massive amount of status resistance through the game. Yep. And it's often overlooked, too. That, that component of the game. It's really noticeable when you get like a two-man burrow strike on Tiny plus one, and, and then the, the Tiny just shakes it off. Yeah, he's just right like, I'm good to, to go. Sorry, guys. Yeah. And it can be so frustrating. You're just like, status resistance, come on. 
What's happening here? The worst is when you lasso tiny, and yeah. then you think, oh my goodness, why it's is like he... half a second or something ridiculous. <laughs> yep. Uh, so the status resistance is... They, they are building Silver Edge. Does the break work on the Grow status resistance? I don't think so. I don't so. think so. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I think yep. Grow is the one that it doesn't actually work on. Kind of insane. Yeah, Grow, pretty good ability. Who knew? Still, though, big items being picked up from Team Secret. Ace on his Weaver picks up the uh, Eye of Scotty. Mid they one. The Daedalus, yeah. Yep. There's some gigantic items for Team Secret. Zai getting run at, but they have no detection. Ace was kind of blocking <laughs> mid one there for a moment. That was a little awkward. Doesn't even matter, though. There's no detection. But it's just funny to see all the pings coming out, you know? Pada, do you have dust? Do you have dust? <laughs> no. Yep. Where's the gem? Yeah, sure hasn't. Here we go with the bush, though. Avalanche, they kind of force him in. There's the Burrow Strike to follow up. He still has the Aegis in BKB. Ice Armor is going to slow this down. There's the Hex. Where's the follow up, though? It's going to push him back. He had a DD. In the meantime, Fado was trying to split push bottom lane, but Pycat has now stolen 105 damage. They're going to go back in with CCNC. He'll pop the BKB mid one getting chased down. They want this Aegis. The Avalanche goes. And, they and there it. it is. They've got it. Now AC needs to run too. He does have the time lapse. The one sphere will go. Pycat's going to get pushed back. The Astral about to go. The BKB from CCNC. No, it's the one from mid one. And Pycat. Now they need to back up. Play a little bit slower for Team Secret. Yep, Team Secret need to back up. Fada's unable to get some building damage off because there are no creep waves. Yeah, time to reset. Puppy would be a nice addition for Optic to get, and they will find him. It's just a support, but he is dead for 72. That is a long time for support to be dead. He does have buyback, but now you don't have Aegis to, to consider. There is still the cheese for Ace. Yeah. I mean, they could still fight, and Fata continues to ride the bottom lane. I don't know why I take my eyes off him. He's doing so much. The tier three getting lower and lower in this top lane. They were looking for the nullifier of the mid lane. They couldn't quite find it as the Sanky was able to blink out in time. But Fata continues to just split push this as best as possible. They do have a ward. The Tinker Ward dropped in the top lane. If uh, Fata tries to go in the trees, they might find the kill. But they're going to sit behind him. Secret will sit behind him. I think they're waiting to bait out a gank potentially. Secret just, they're struggling to find the fights. You know, they think, oh, we've got Aegis, we can sit here and siege, but they take so much damage just from all these random spells coming out. And CCNC is massive. Yeah, he's huge. He's an MKB now. Um, the, the, the double Lotus Orb that we mentioned earlier, Zai finally got it. So the double Nullifier sort of countered, at the very least. Yeah, we talk about Nullifier being this huge game-changing item, or at least potentially game-changing. You can use it on these core heroes before they get the BKBs off, but... With a quick reaction, with the uh, Lotus Orb, Lotus Orb has no travel time. You know, it's instant. You can clearly see the Nullifier traveling. Something pretty easy to counter. Yeah. And Optic have taken this deficit down to 1k. The track kills help out a lot. Yeah. The experience is way in their favor, 10,000. You know, we are approaching that late game, though, with the Team Secrets Tricor. They right. do scale very, very well into the game, but... Nature's Optic. Prophet, I mean, Shadow Fiend. Yep. Weaver, too. We could talk about the level 25 talents. The talent uh, for the Shadow Fiend that he's getting close to is the 3 damage per soul or the 40% cooldown reduction. Yep. Soon we'll see the damage per soul. It's got the item build for it. Exactly. He's up to 21, so he's still a ways away. And he would get the Scoochie movement speed, which make him... I don't want to say impossible to kill, but... Bata will get the, uh, the Courier. He'll try to TP away, and it looks like there's nobody there to stop it as he BKBs. Nothing they could do about it. They took off the Chain Frost mini stun. Very smart to BKB. Gotta be safe. Burrow Strike hits on the Puppy, and now the Force away. There's the Atos. The Lotus Orb's back. And that'll hit onto Yapsor. Just some, I guess, footsies being played between Optic and Secret now. Ah, huh, footsies. Oh, yeah. You hate it. Tier 2 will get thwacked down by CCNC on the Tiny. And again, Fox is just gonna continue to split push bottom. Team Secret can't do anything besides split push. He's they're not just, even got the wave that far out, and they're going to just cut the wave. Yep, they're just not ready to fight yet. Optic Gaming are basically six-slotted on their tiny. I, I, but what are you waiting out. for for Secret to fight? Is, is it the the level 25 for mid one? Is it the Satanic? Is it both? Just need more items. Yeah. Satanic on mid one's going to help. Next item for uh, Ace with Weaver is also going to help. They just need items to where they don't die to the burst combo. Once they can outlast the tiny's damage with the Sand King Disables coming on top of it, it's when they can start to finally win some fights. 
see CNC now the top net worth hero in the game. I mean, he's massive, and it's a pretty easy for Tiny to farm at this stage in the game. Oh, Tree grab. Even Puppy's rich mod. He's shadow bladed up. He's looking for Ace. He gets the courier instead. Mid one has BKB. Puppy's trying to run away. The BKB will go. I think he has an A on this, which keeps Puppy alive. We want the null fire onto Sand King, but he's okay. He gets forced away. We can see reinitiation from either team if they want to go for it. Fada's still split pushing bottom. Optic needed TP back home, and CCNC is doing just that. Yep, there's always that constant side lane threat Secret? from the Furion. They're so fast, but they won't be able to chase them down. It looks like they're going to back up. Mid one closing in on the Satanic, very close. And this is turning into the longest game of the tournament, I feel like. 49 minutes in, it's 17 to 15. And this we've, game does not seem like it's going to end anytime soon, no, does it? No, not at all. And we've had a lot of barn burners, and, and the kill score seems high, but it's not. It feels that the pace is slowed to a crawl at this point in the game. Yep. But it's, it's, it is certainly tense, as mid one might be gone on by CCNC. It's him with the avalanche, the epicenter. Can they blow him up? Yes, they can. He's down for 90. The null fires there. CCNC in trouble. They've dropped two now. CCNC still getting chased, but Ace has to run, and the after are keeping away. There's the shirk hit from Zai, and it's three dead, and now Secret have to back themselves up. They will continue to split push with Vada. I don't even know why I have to say that at this point. You already know that it's happening. You can see it. But that is three dead at Brax. Optic, they blew up this Shadow Fiend before he even, even had a chance. You know, that was even with PyCat's creep dying. He was boots of traveling into the team fight. It got cleaned up, but... You know, it is not easy to push into Elder Titan all, especially when you have to deal with this annoying period they, on the side. They got lanes. the gem back because Yapsor had it too. And so Optic take the gem. Secret can buy another one. It should be available now. Yeah, the gem is definitely a big deal. They have more than enough money on some of these heroes to buy a gem. More shenanigans from Fada. <laughs> it's just... actually kind of scary. If CCNC is there with another hero, they're able to kill him even through the BKB. They have enough physical damage to do it. Yeah, Fada with the confidence to walk up, knowing that CCNC is not there preemptively to set up in time. Yeah, there's that extra gem Yaps were just purchased. So hit, hit, they'll lose that one. Not the end of the world, they lose a fight. It's now a 5k advantage for Optic. Roche is respawning in 10 seconds. Both teams can take it extraordinarily fast. Yeah, but Mon, how crazy is that? Team Secret lose a, a team fight in the river, right? That close to their base with a, you know, 51 minute game time long respawn timers and they don't lose any buildings just because Furion's still pushing on the side lanes? And that's the hero in a nutshell. Keeping the waves pushed out constantly. Yep, well, Zai's actually Zai has spotted him. With the gem Track, too. Avalanche misses, oh. the Shuriken's there, the toss, he's got no BKB though, Ace is coming in, the Null Fire coming off, but CC and C, the toss up, the double toss, Fata, one more auto attack, they get the kill, they're bossing in with Pycat, they miss out on the stop, mid one is there, the Earth Splitter coming out, but it will miss completely as well, the Death War, the BKB for Pycat, they're all running away, now coming in is going to be 3 3 looking for a burst strike, they get the Null Fire off, and Secret have to back up. And they will do so. The track comes down to the puppy. They can continue to chase for Optic, but it looks like they will get themselves back to safety. And Secret, they might want to consider buying back on Fata if they want to try to contest Roche. I mean, is that is that the choice for them in this fight, Rex? Trying I, to get to this I, Roche? I don't know if buying back on Nature's Prophet is even going to do anything when yeah. it comes to contesting Roche. And, like, he cannot fight at all. You know, his game is a purely split push. Oh, mid one actually goes for the 40% cooldown reduction. They're looking for a burrow. 3-3 three, three blinks on the wrong side of the uber cliff. And they don't have vision on the high ground. And Puppy is trying to bait something in. Optic will back up, though. Yep, it's Roche time. Time There's, to slay Tiny's boss. They have the Astral heading over to the Roche pit. They have a stomp available. This is where Yapsir will come into play. The stomp will take them out of the pit for now. And he'll continue to spam that. It's back up in six seconds. At least the stomp is. The Astro will come back in. Oh, and then... Goodbye, puppy. Okay, he is just dead. BKB for CCC. They get off the hex out of mid one. He's in trouble. The toss coming in. Pine can't get the static lead going. Mid one pops his own BKB. He has no satanic yet. The force forward. They really want mid one, but he's so fast. He's able to hightail it back up to the high ground. But the burrow strike is there on Ace. The toss is up as well. The avalanche is a double kill for CCC. And that is no buyback. Ace down for 82 seconds. Bata is going to have to continue to do what he's been doing all game, but Optic are now on the doorstep of the Tier 3 tower in this mid lane. They've got a small creep wave that is just alive, but look at the damage that they are doing. This Tiny is crushing this Tier 3 tower. There are two dead. The Burrow Strike on the mid one. He has no BKB. He gets hexed. He's got the cheese. I'm not sure he can get it off in time. Great stop. He's able to eat it because the App Store is there with that Astral Echo Stomp combination, but they are still losing their rack. CC and C is hitting so hard, and so is Pocket now with 148 damage stolen. It is a full set of racks down in this mid lane for Optic, and they will back up and more than likely head to Roche.
That was such an intelligent play from Optic. Like, the only vision Team Secret had over the Roshan pit was that spirit. So as soon as it came back, they just, they said, screw it, we're just gonna go fight you. We know you're hovering around the area, and they, they just found the heroes. It was very smart. Secret, they have buyback on the Weaver. This Roche is pretty close to death, but not quite yet. Mid one now has a Satanic, if he can get to the Secret Shop to buy it. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we'll have enough for buyback, though. Static Link, or rather the Plasma Field. They will take Roche. This is Aegis, Cheese, and a Refresher Shard. Aegis goes to PPD. I suppose that makes sense, <laughs> considering that everybody else is maxed out. The true MVP. All right. right. Give me that. He also has the Refresher Shard, too. I deserve this. I'm sure he'll give it to one of his teammates, but... Yeah, just holding it for now. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny. The Cheese was taken. Also, he literally has all three items. The true carry. There is a DD rune at the top rune spot. Whoever finds it will have a great source of damage for the next fight. Yeah, double. So I might get killed top lane. This could be nice for Secret, but he forces himself out to safety and they didn't have the gem there in time on Fata. Yep, and when Zai's gem, he's able to see him coming, so... Not really afraid. It's an 11k lead. Fata's got 7,000 gold, but I can't think of an item he could buy that would make a difference. I, I don't know either. <laughs> I, I'm surprised this Tricor for Secret, I feel like it, it could be doing more. They, they could still win these fights. They are down 11k, they're down to Aegis, Cheese, and Refresher Shard, but again, the Aegis is on uh, Peter at this point. Yeah, it's all the initiation mod, right? They have these three strong cores, and they've got the items, but it's not as simple as, oh, we're going to blank Sand King stun with the Hex on top, and then Tiny jumps in with the combo as well. Like, it's just, it's so difficult to play the game when you can't lock these heroes down. We're talking about a Razor with max movement speed, tiny, fast as well, and then he's got the status resistance on top of that, while also being extremely tanky, and he's got a BKB. Like, they just can't lock heroes down compared to, to OG, or Optic Gaming's lineup. Uh-oh, I almost messed up that one. Yeah, it's all right. That would have been ugly. It's, it's getting late in the day for you and I, but, uh, Bata, he's picking up the item I would expect him to pick up in the Scythe of Vice. That's his next item in his Quick Buy. And that maybe is enough, probably not. It helps, for sure, right? If you can get that hex off on some of these key targets before the BKBs come out. It's a step in the right direction, for sure. Helps set up that hex into the uh, Nullifier Orchid combo. Optic are moving together. There is a ward that will scout out Pycat. He's not smoked. They just run bottom, though. They have a double damage room. Watch this thing fall. The Nullifier comes so out. They fast. want CC and C dead. They can't do anything. He gets Lotus Orb. No, Nullifier will do nothing once that comes out. Uh, but the DD is down. He has a Moon Shard on CC and C. He has a Silver Edge. He has bots two. He is, for all intents and purposes, six slotted. Perhaps even seven slotted. And gets rid of the bots, maybe. They got the Burrow Strike Initiation on the mid one, but they were waiting for him. 3-3, three, three, the one in trouble. The Lotus Orb will keep him alive. The Maldic taking him down. Big kill for Secret. That's him dead for 100 seconds. And now Optic forced to back. And now they have to fight with Fatsa down to the bottom lane. But he's not going to go too far. He's going to sit in the trees. They're still chasing him back on the other side of the map. His mid one wants PPD. They're TPing in with Bata. The Sprout will be there. They've got the Nullifier off first in the Orca. The Chain Frost bouncing in the Avalanche. But it's hitting the creeps more than anybody else. It was a good effort. That's just the Aegis, though. They've got the Astro, but PPD is so freaking squishy. That's the gem. It's dead. That is actually huge for Secret. That's three kills. They got the Sand King as well. And they got Zai at the end of the fight. Zai had a gem. This is... Plenty of time for Secret to work with now, and Optic are forced back. They've got to defend their base, and this is the Tricor. It's starting to get a line, Brax. It looks like it's starting to look good for Secret here. Yep, they don't have to worry about the side lanes because Firan, of course, has no cooldown on the teleport once he gets that 25 talent, which he has. Fatsa's going top, but he doesn't have enough damage to kill CC and C. Not alone, anyway. At least he shouldn't. You know, with the Sprout, he's got no way to break it. He's going to try to go for it anyway, forever. but look how tanky CC and C is. He's going to go for the BKB TP. He should be able to make it out. There's no way they can really cancel it, but that's BKB down. And this is the go time for Secret. They have 36 seconds with that Sand King and the Bounty Hunter available. Lich even longer, dead for 43. No ice armor. This could be evened up quickly. As Avalanche sad comes as it out, sounds, one has the Satanic. No ice armor makes a huge difference it's a, here. It, it is massive for Optic. They're going to lose a set of racks, almost assuredly, maybe even two. Bada gets the 2 3 tower in the top lane, but they're losing the racks pit, and it's gone. 
Secret, they've done it so far. Can they get more out of this? They're heading bottom. That tier three will fall. They might lose another full set of racks. The glyph will go. Pycat doesn't want to fight. They don't have their Sand King initiation. They don't necessarily need Peter, but they need to find something to static link going. Pycat will pop the BKB. Puppy gets off the Aeon disc and the Death Ward, but he's still fine for now. They're still sieging. They get the top range racks. They'll get the bottom melee racks. They're about to get it all. Pycat has to run it. They will lose the bottom melee racks as well. The Hexes are coming out, though. They're going to thwack him down. The Barrow Strike. They keep the range racks alive. Midwood is still there. He's trying to auto attack. CCNC will fall. He has to buy that. Midwood pops the Rec Beam. Pycat trying to defend the base, but the base is gone. Mid one, BKB, and he's got the epicenter coming up for the same team. They've got the hex that is a dead mid one, but he has buyback, and so does Ace. Did they get Megas? They got they Mega Creeps. They got Mega Creeps for Secret, but they will find Fodder. They get off the Hex. They get off the Avalanche combination, potentially. There's the toss-up. They've got the tree going. Dead for 100 seconds is him, but they, again, they have Mega Creeps. They have buybacks, Brax. This is incredible. What a turnaround for Secret. Oh, my. I can't believe it. All it took was one fight for Secret to, <laughs> to take everything. This is 60 minutes into the game with three six-slotted carries. These buildings die so fast. What do you do if you're optic? You have no buyback on CC and C. You try to force the ones that are available for a secret. But you have to fight into Megas and Fata can TP around the map. The waves will always be pushed in starting now. This is all in, Mott. They need to make something happen but here. But there or... are all the buybacks available. You don't want to use aces, but you might have to. The creeps are coming. There's the Fata buyback. They still have 30 seconds on ace, but of course he has the buyback available. The creep wave is in now, so there's no backdoor the protection. The tier force is there. They've got the hex up. They've got 3-3 three, three in trouble, but he is able to get Lotus Orb and stay alive. The death ward coming in. That'll push him back. Bot is still not TPing, not yet. They buy back on everybody else. Ace is still alive, though, and he doesn't have to buy back. He is up in 12 seconds, and that is big. The buyback is still alive and available. Optic just can't afford to back up here. If they back up, they're just going to have to play against Mega Creeps with the Nature's Prophet. This is the last stand mod. They have to go for this. Optic down Mega. CCNC doing as much damage as he can. Puppy in trouble, but he has the Aeon Disc. He's still alive. The Burrow Strike coming in, but they won't really find anything with it. 3 3 needs to back up. The Lotus Orb is still available. They've used one on the Tiny. They have another tree grab coming in. Plasma Field is there. No Nature Prophet TP, not yet anyway. The Tier 4 getting low. CCNC popping the BKB. They want the Tier 4 towers, but that's not going to be enough to win this game. They're looking for Puppy. They should find him here with a toss combo, but CCNC getting low. He'll fall. Dead for 125. It's off to Pike. And the chain frost, Puppy getting low, he will fall the yeah, so we're doing the work, Puppy buys back, the Ancient going down, but it's not enough, Ace gets a double kill, the Sand King buying back, but they will lose to the Lich as well, now TPing in, Zai back at the fray, 3-3 needs to run, they're all pushing forward for Secret, they're looking for more, they might find the Sand King again, another force, have the Burrow Strike out there, barely hanging on, Fada TPs and he BKBs, Zai is getting low, the Hex is there, they've got the Bloodthorn, they've got that kill, it's 96 seconds without the Tiny, 79 without the Bounty Hunter, I'm not sure how they could do this, but Secret, it looks like they've done it, Brax. It looks like they've come back. Look at that gold swing. What a fight. My <laughs> lord. I bought Secret up 1k gold. <laughs> That's it. I don't even know what this game is, Brax. I'm going to be honest with that you. That was pretty well played from Secret. Ace has the buyback. He sat there in the front line, baited out all the spells so that Shadowfin can actually dish out the damage. Uses the buyback, then Optic Gaming are put in this awkward position this where they've it, right? everything. They have no tiny for 60 seconds. Yep. No buyback on CCNC's yeah, tiny. Ice armor can only do so much for you. Oh, well, let's see. The Tricor the is region. coming through in the end. They are still not out of it yet, though. Lich getting run at the Nullifier is there. They have the Lotus Orb. They're saving it. They use it on Pycat instead. They need to keep him alive. Lich is down. It's two heroes alive. Fada's getting low, but Pycat has to do it all on his own. Fada TP's away. The Death Ward. Pycat gets back to the well, but the Tier 4s are getting overrun. They're going to find more. The Sand King nullified him. He gets off the Burrow Strike, but now he's falling low. The Spirit Vessel taking him down and bringing him down. Dead for 120 seconds. GG is called. Secret comeback from one set of racks down. They get the Megas at the end of the the game. What an absolutely outstanding comeback from the European team, destroying Optic in that game at the end. And they will make it on to the playoffs. Mod, I give you permission to call that one a barn burner. That was